Hello guys, how's it going and welcome back to Tech It with myself, Lewis. I hope you're all good. And today we're going to get on with some really cool stuff. You know, it's going to be awesome. I've been making a few changes around the house since you've been gone, as always. And I've basically just revamped a few things around here. So I've added a few more magmatic engines to this guy. And they're currently switched off, so I've used these really nice redstone wiring. So that way we can kind of get them going when we need to get them going. But at the minute, this guy is uh, full, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, so we don't need any extra in there. I also have my power tool pretty much filled up I've been using it a little bit and we have some nice power in here so 600,000 these guys have switched themselves off which is quite nice and yeah it's looking good I'm enjoying this you know we've got some really cool energy on the go now I was saying in the last couple of episodes that we're probably gonna go ahead and make a sorting machine but I think I'm going to leave that for a few more episodes because I really want to make the rest of this power armor and to do that we need a lot of wiring which means we not we need tons of rubber and at the minute, I haven't got too much rubber. I've got, like, enough, you know, and we've got some wires, but really I want a uh, kind of infinite source of rubber, which we're going to go ahead and do today. Now, we're going to do this by using a mod called Mine Factory Reloaded, and if you've been playing Tech It Light, you're going to realise that it hasn't got forestry involved in it. So, Mine Factory Reloaded is quite an old mod, and it's been kind of, as it sounded, reloaded for uh, Tech It Light. Well, not just for Tech It Light, but they made a Mine Factory Reloaded version of it. And I can understand fully why they put that in Tech It Light, because we haven't got Railcraft, and we haven't got Forestry, and this kind of fills in the gap quite nicely, and it's also designed to make your life just that little bit simpler for basic tasks, like fishing and uh, cutting down trees and whatnot, and this is why we're going to make this thing. Now, you do need quite a bit of rubber to get yourself going with this, which is kind of the uh, way with most things, it's never easy. Um, and to do that, we need to make a few things, so I'm just going to make a circuit, and uh, I'm going to make a battery quickly, and we're just going to make one thing, which I never see people make for some reason. I don't know why people don't make this, but we're just going to make ourselves a uh, really cool thing. So I'll just grab all these. Yeah, looking nice. And uh, we'll take all this, make us up a tree tap, pow, and we'll just put these like this. And this should work, all the way around maybe. Which way around do you want to be, my friend? Uh, I think it's one of these ones, isn't it? Where I have to go like this. Yeah, pow. Electronic tree tap. Nice. Uh, yeah, for some reason I never see people make an electronic tree tap. And, uh, oh yeah, uh, here you can see I've got rid of, I changed it back to recipe mode. The main reason I've always had it in cheat mode, which um, you guys all told me about in the last episode, because I was wondering why the Philosopher's Stone was allowing me to do that stuff, which isn't now, uh, is basically because I hate having rain. <laughs> I know it's something really silly, but I hate it when it rains. So I've just changed weather off in the uh, Optifine settings and basically put it back to recipe mode so uh, that way uh, I don't have the temptation. <laughs> so let's uh, charge this guy up in our finger bob here. There we go. Nice bit of power. Sweet. And uh, oh my god that's so quick. I love how we've got all these geogens and everything going. It just makes life a quadrillion times easier. And we're going to go tap our trees and get the uh, excess rubber that we've got. I did it earlier, so we have a little bit, but, you know, we could probably do with a little bit more. So, here we go. Nice bit of rubber. I'm pretty sure they've regened a little bit. Yeah, it's only, like, uh, 20 minutes ago that I actually tapped these guys. So, And they seem to be growing back quite, quite, quite quickly, which is uh, really nice. Yeah, there we go. Some nice rubber. Ooh, bit of rogue rubber. Come here, you, uh, you sticky resin, you. Grab you, and we'll grab you. Nice. Um, cool. And this guy holds quite a nice amount, 9,600. We've uh, used it a little bit, and it seems to be fine. So, let's go ahead and get this stuff melted and changed into regular rubber. There we go. Now, what you need to do with this is, once you've got your rubber up and going, you then need to smelt it again. So, once you smelt the rubber again, you're going to get this stuff, raw plastic. And raw plastic is what's going to be used for most of the recipes in Mine Factory. It basically makes the machine frames that you need. Uh, you also need some stone, so we're just going to go ahead and make a few of these guys. So uh, it's uh, stone and raw plastic. Uh, no, 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 wait two seconds. It's not like that. You need, uh, you need to use the raw plastic first. So we need to go like this to make these guys. And I'm just going to pop this in here. So we need quite a lot of these raw plastic sheets. So I'm just going to grab a load of them. And we need our stone like this. And we need the sheets like this, making these guys. So let's just pop these in here. <clears throat> we'll make six of them. Actually, no, jump balls to it, we'll make nine. And that should be enough to make most of the things we need. We do need to make one more thing, which we need some sticks for. So let's go ahead and grab some of this. 
There we go. Pretty cool. Uh, we need to make our tinkerer's tool. You know, everyone, every uh, mod has a tinkerer's tool, and this guy has the precision sledgehammer, which is that guy there. Nice. And already we're starting to get a very horrible backlog of random objects, which seems to always be the way. Now, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to make a planter, obviously for planting our goods. And we have some nice rubber here, so let's go ahead and get this re-smelted again. I'm just going to pop in here because I don't think the rest of the rubber's done just yet. Oh, there we go. Nice. And uh, we can see that's cooking up pretty nice. It should be coming out the uh, bottom here. There we go. Some uh, plastic. Cool. So, we're going to make a planter. And to do this, we uh, we need some flower plot. Flower. Flower plots. <laughs> Flower pots. There we go. We need two of these guys, so let's make some flower pots. There we go. Nice. Some flower pots. Uh, we also need ourselves a piston. So let's grab one piston. Nice. And we need some gold and one of those machine frames. I think I have some gold already in it. Yeah, I do. Nice. So it just goes like this. So you put that like that. You put your piston like that. You put your uh, flower pots here and a factory machine here, giving us a planter. So that's one of the machines that we need. Now we need a harvester, which means we need a few more things. So we need a uh, golden axe. There we go, like that. We need ourselves some shears, which are fairly easy. There we go. We need two of these guys, and uh, they can't be used, so make sure you haven't used them either. There we go. And uh, we need gold, so really easy stuff to kind of get yourself going, which is why I quite like this mod. People don't really touch it because it's not added in many mod packs, but overall it's quite cool. So there we go. We have a harvester. And we need one more thing, which is a fertilizer, which means we need a uh, we need a glass bottle for this guy. There we go, one glass bottle. We need uh, some leather, which I'm sure I have around here somewhere. Yeah, we got leather, nice. So, fairly simple again. That guy like that. We have our glass ball like that. Machine frame and gold. There we go, nice fertilizer, insane. So, with these guys, we can basically get ourselves going and automating a rubber tree farm. You can also use the planter to automate everything else. So you can use regular trees, you could use it for pretty much anything. And I'm just going to go ahead and chop all these down, because we don't need these guys anymore. Okie doke, so we've managed to clear all this place out. I've chopped down all of the trees, and my power tool seriously made light work of everything. God, I love this guy. Now, we have a few stone chisel bricks which I managed to place down around here, so it looks a little bit nice, you know. And we're going to go ahead and set this guy up. So the first thing we need is the planter. And this guy, I'm thinking, is going to go around here somewhere. I kind of want him a little bit raised because he needs to be powered. So we could power him from the front, um, but I think like, bringing him up one step will just make it a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and place him here, like that. And we're going to need some stairs eventually to get ourselves up to this place. Now, the planter basically can plant within a 3x3 three three radius as long as he's put in the middle. So, for instance, uh, we could... Uh, oh, we need to actually get on top of him. This is going to be harder than I thought. <laughs> there we go. So, you can have one here, and then obviously one here, one here, one here, and then so far around 3x3 three three radius. Nice and easy. I'm actually going to go ahead and do it this way, purely because of the way the trees grow. You can't have them all growing next to each other because they won't grow. Obviously, they're rubber trees. They need a certain amount of size around them. Now, I'm thinking we could probably just use the chisel stone, ch chisel stone brute <laughs> to do the rest of it. Here we go. There we go. Looking quite nice. We'll put this guy here. And this guy here, like that. Cool. And I, I think for the time being, we're probably just going to have these steps, like, made here. You know, it's, it looks horrifically horrible, but it's fine. There we go. I can get up here. Cool. So, we have our planter down below. Now, really, we want our fertilizer and our harvester to be on both sides as well. So, I'm thinking we could probably put our uh, harvester around here. Like, here. It's probably a good place to put him. He might need to go a little bit further back, but we'll find out when we get it going. So, there's that like that. Now, let's turn these guys around. And there we go. Looking good. And now we need to actually power this guy. So, we're going to do this by just using these redstone energy conduits for the time being. Um, I'm thinking these guys are actually going to have to go back a little bit more just because of the way the trees grow. So, I'm just going to move them back a little tad. There we go. The cool thing with all of the mine factory stuff as well is you can just break it like normal. There we go. Cool. 
wiggle nice and easy. So fertilizer and this guy. Give him a little wiggle round. There we go. Cool. Looking nice. And let's get these guys powered up. Pow. We're just going to use our redstone energy conduit for the time being, I think. There we go. So there's that one powered. And now you. Cool beans. So the power's actually going into these guys, which I'm quite happy about. Uh, we'll probably place our conduit like here for the time being. We will find a way of automating, automating the power to these guys, but for the time being, I just want to kind of get it like this, so that way at least we can actually get the uh, power on the go. Now, obviously, there's no power in here at the minute, so I'm going to go ahead and throw my rubber trees in here. Let me just explain the uh, process on these side of things. So this is your energy bar. This is your process bar. And this guy here is your snooze bar. Now, uh, snooze bar is basically these guys run like a tick status. So, uh, yeah, they um, basically run not constant. It's like a redstone. It's like when you get the ticks from a redstone engine, it's the same type of thing. Um, the harvester's quite nice. When he's harvesting, you can also select these. So you can tell him to keep leaves and whatnot. I'm going to keep it to no. You can also do it with jungle wood and small shrooms. Obviously, jungle wood's pretty cool for if you're trying to make uh, cocoa and all that. Uh, and the harvester actually also puts out a liquid, which I will go a little bit into later. But I'm thinking the harvester is probably going to bring his stuff out one of the ways. So we're going to need to grab ourselves a few pipes so we can get all this set up nicely. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the best thing to be doing. And I'm getting really hungry again. I keep running out of food. Let's have a little munch. Cool. Right, I'm going to grab all the bits I need and I'll be right back. Right, so I've got all the stuff I need. I've just grabbed my uh, redstone energy cell and we're going to get this guy set up and running. I think this is going to be cool. And it's going to be the best way to get loads of cool stuff. So, I'm thinking I'm probably going to put my rubber running straight into that guy. Uh, he can kind of send all his stuff down there. I'm hoping it's not going to come out of the obsidian. But obviously, that's a pool pipe, so it should just kind of go with the flow, hopefully. <laughs> can only hope. So, I'm going to put my rest of my rubber saplings into here. And we're going to wire this guy up so he's working quite nicely. So, we want certain inputs and outputs coming out of different areas. I want uh, cool stone coming out of this guy, like this, and I want a diamond pipe. I, I had to make a diamond pipe. I didn't want to, but I had to. So I want this guy to come out of here, and I want them to run into here, like this. Uh, yeah, that's going to work. There we go. So that can go like that. I do need to grab myself at least one sapling so I can just tell this guy where to put stuff. So, oh. So black is going to put out saplings. Nice. There we go. You can go back in there. And mm, I think that's going to work fine. Uh, let's get this guy on the go, our tank. Because obviously, like I said before, we're going to have some excess fluid. And the excess fluid is going to go into hot like this. Uh, the free will probably be fine for the time being. And I'm going to use liquid ducts for this. So these guys can be powered quite nicely with a uh, few different ways. You can use IC2, you can use industrial craft, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's it. I think there's a few other ways of doing it, but I think those are the best ways, and they, they seem the most productive. Um, so that's quite nice. So let's change this guy around. So there's that. We want the uh, output coming out of here. Uh, we are going to have to get a lever on this, so let's just quickly use this guy. Um, this is very bodge jobbed at the minute. <laughs> very bodge jobbed. Alright, you can come in. You can come in. And we'll just get a lever up here, so at least this way we can uh, tell this guy to work. Pow. There we go. Actually, you might need to be a little bit more to the side. That might work. I don't know. We'll find out. So let's put the uh, lever on here. I made a load of these guys. There we go. I think that'll work. Looks pretty good. So these guys are going to come out of here and then go down here. We need our rubber and our rubber wood to go out a different way. So we want our rubber and rubber wood to come through our cobblestone transport pipe through here. And I want to come out of here and go down into here like this. And there we go. And that's going to put out the rest of our items. So, 
let's pray that this is going to work. So that's yellow, so that's that. And I haven't got any resin on me at the minute, so we're just going to have to hope and see where the resin goes to. That's uh, always fun. Uh, we also need some fertilizer, so let's go make some fertilizer. You don't actually need fertilizer, you can just kind of leave it to run as it is. But it takes ages, so I'm going to make a little bit of fertilizer just to kind of get it going. And to do this we need some, uh, we need some wheat, we need some bone meal, nice. And we need some stickies, there we go, and some string, nice. We need quite a few bits to actually make this stuff. So I'm just going to use this for the time being. So to do this you put a wheat on the sides like that, and you put a stick in the middle, kapow, and you put your uh, bone meal and string like this. And there we go, giving us industrial fertilizer. Let's just make a few of these guys, so that way we can get production going nice and easy. And there we go, gives us 12, cool. And uh, automatically my uh, inventory is full. <laughs> nice. So let's go and get this guy running. Let's put our fertilizer in here. Oh, there it goes again. <laughs> uh, you can all go in here. Nice. And oh, I'm hoping this is going to work. So, redstone energy cell. Let's turn this guy around so he's working. Oh. Epic failure. There we go. Oh, they planted. They planted. Is it going to work? Come on. Uh, once this ticks down, the. Oh, I didn't put the, put the wrong side of beef in there. <laughs> so this should now go ahead and fertilize one of these guys. Obviously, bear in mind they can only grow within a certain radius of each other. So, yep, there we go. So that will do that. Then this guy should go ahead and cut uh, is it on a tick down it's not on a tick down why are you not cutting hmm you should be cutting I think it's because it's one two three yeah it's too far away okay all right I got this okay so take you and this is gonna be fairly simple I hope <laughs> so we'll take this guy He's going to go here, and we want to move him around with our precision hammer. There we go. And we want our liquid duct to come around here like that. Let's change him around so he's got output, and we don't want the view here. There we go. Very nice. We need to get some power to you, which is fairly simple. I just broke my leg. Yay! There we go. Very nice. Cool. Working as intended. So he's cutting that stuff down. Now, we're probably going to have to move this because I don't think that's going to work. Um, where are we going to put this? Probably do it like this, hopefully. There we go. Let's just see if this guy's actually got anything in it. Wow. He's grown high. Ha ha ha. Uh, let's go down this way. Oh, nice. Sapling worked. Cool. So, sapling is coming down, which will then go into here. I think we might need something over top to stop these guys from growing so big. But, yeah, we have some excess liquid, so... That should... As long as it's in the right way. No, it's too far away. Let's just put this guy... Here. Why are you not outputting your liquid, young one? Unless it has to come out the top. That could be why. Possibly. Possibly could be why. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to change this around a little bit and I'll be right back. There we go, looking great. Check it out. I just had to put a few bricks up there to stop it from growing so high. At that height it just wasn't growing properly. But we're looking pretty snifty now. Look at it going. Oh yeah. Now uh, this stuff does have to be coming out the top as well. So I'm just going to give this a quick little hit. There we go. And uh, we'll see all the liquid drain out of here into here. And this stuff we can use later on. But I will show you that in another episode what we can use this stuff for. There are two liquids that Mine Factory Reloaded adds into the game. And both of them have a pretty cool uh, usage. So, yeah. 
uh, but hopefully this will fill up and we'll get a lot of this stuff and then we can just kind of crack on from there. Uh, this guy has a bit of fertilizer in it and <laughs> they're growing very weirdly. But the cool thing with this is the chances of getting the saplings from this guy is at such a high chance that it's going to keep itself going. So you can see from that one we got two saplings. I already have another two coming down through here and we have two inside here at the minute and two up there. So these guys are just going to keep going around. I did have to move this because the obsidian pipe was outflowing where it should be sucking in so I'll fix that at another point but there we go. So that's pretty much going to keep itself flowing and that will give us a really nice amount of um, rubber rubber wood and uh, excess rubber from the trees you can see a few flowing down through there and uh, our rubber trees here let's go inside and just have a gander and see how much wood we've got from this this should be quite a nice amount of wood i think yeah we got 25 rubber wood and five sticky resin wow i think there's a spider on the roof <laughs> what is he doing up there let's go and take care of this guy this unwelcome traveller. Uh, have I got my sword on me? Oh yeah, my Vorpal Blade. Oh, he's got Bane of Anthropods. I mean, it's going to be a good, it's going to prop again. Come here. Oh, there we go. Easy. One shot it. Nice. So, that is uh, pretty good. I'm getting all this rubber wood and excess rubber from this guy. Uh, yeah, it's looking good. I think in the next episode, I guess the best thing to do to get all of the rubber together is to build ourselves a... Um, uh, uh, we'll get ourselves a uh, way of converting the rubber wood into rubber through an IC2 machine, which would be quite good. It's much easier than using tree taps and stuff, so yeah, good times. And look at this guy run. Nice. Let's see how much power he's used so far. Uh, he's used... He hasn't used as much as I actually thought he would have used. You know, these guys can store a lot of power, but I thought it might use a little bit more than that. The uh, one thing with these guys, though, is when they're not functioning, they are actually still using power because they go on like an internal cooldown tick. So just bear that in mind. You can't really just leave that there with them not functioning because it will still use up power. So, yeah. Uh, we're out of fertilizer now, though, so these guys are just going to slowly take their time. I think the best thing to do here is probably disconnect this guy because I don't want it to keep ticking over. But yeah, there we go. So that will just keep going along. Nice. I guess, uh, yeah, in the next episode, obviously, we'll find a way to get the uh, resin cooked up and all that good stuff. And uh, we'll find a way to automate this as well so I don't have to keep using the redstone energy cell. I think I might just, like, do a long connection all the way into the uh, area downstairs so we can keep it kind of powered. But yes, that's good. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. I will see you later for another episode. Have a good one and goodbye.